What's up guys? We got another video for you here today. Um, it's an exciting time. If you're looking to buy a Tesla, they just cut prices anywhere from 10 to 20%. And then once you add in the EV credit, $7,500 EV credit, it's well above 20% drop in prices. What this means for demand and how this could kill the competition. Let's get the video started. Tesla stock traded a little bit down today. Um, if you've seen my other videos, you know I could care less on how the stock trades to me it means nothing. I'm looking well out into the future, into the 20, uh, 30s, 2040s. Um, I believe long term that you know you're not even going to remember what happened on day to day in 2022. Uh, breaking. So as Tesla has reduced their car prices massively in the U.S., uh, the rear wheel uh, drive Model Three. Um, drop from 46, 47,000 down to 44,000. And then you add in the $7,500 tax break, uh, credit. It's below 40,000 now. You got the Model 3 performance going from 63,000 to 54,000, which is a 14% drop. And then add in the $7,500 EV credit. It's close to a 20% drop. Um, what is going to be demand is going to go insane. I'm sure there's people already ordering. I know people were waiting uh, for the EV credits till 2023 and how this is just going to Tesla dropping the price by close to 20% and then adding the EV credit demand is just going to go insane. And then the model uh, Y long range went from 66,000 to 53,000, a 20% drop. I think it's already one of the best selling cars in Europe, in the US and in China. Um, it's just going to definitely be number one, I believe, across the board in all these places. Could be the number one selling car in the world this year. Um, it'll be exciting to see what happens there. So as we go into recession, they're just lowering costs. And let's see how this is going to kill uh, legacy automotives. If we look here, uh, the Ford Mustang Mach-E is too expensive to be profitable at the moment. And... Um, it, right now, the Mach-E costs 25,000 more to manufacture than their equivalent um, ICE car. So right now, Ford can't make it profitable. So if you have to choose between a you know, Ford or a Model Y, one has better performance, one has better range, better safety, better software as FSD, um, if you order that, you'd have to be I don't know what would be wrong with you if you're going to buy. You'd have to just be literally so just hate Elon so much or hate Tesla so much. It's similar to maybe people buying Androids back in the day or buying a Blackberry instead of an iPhone just because they're just against an iPhone and they want to just fight it and don't believe in it. Um, over time, I think it's going to be just a horrible decision. Look at this with General Motors. Expect, G GM expects electric vehicles to make money in 2025, 2023, 2024, 2025. They expect to be profitable by them. I mean, that's a long time of losing money. And how are they going to compete? So a lot of people are seeing this as negative news right now that, oh, Tesla's dropping their prices. They must feel the competition. No, they're trying to kill the competition. The competition is basically, this is the, you know, a checkmate move. I don't believe unless incentives get even better that Ford, GM have a shot. Um, the only companies I believe that could compete slightly just in the EV space will be some Chinese companies. And even then, are they gonna be able to compete once FSD comes out? I don't think so. So yeah, this is just a, a big time move and going into a recession, lowering your prices by 20%. And also, if you're scared that this is just gonna affect margins completely, the reason why Tesla already increased prices substantially last year based on uh, supply chain issues and inflation, they were ahead of the game. Now that they see inflation going down and the supply chain, uh, different material costs are going down, I believe that they're just a little bit ahead of the game. So margins, might will go down a little bit, but I think with the lowering cost of materials, I think margins won't get hit as much as people are thinking, as well as inflation going down. And if we look at this tweet from Kathy Wood, supply chain bottlenecks are diminishing. Tesla can cut prices in line with battery cost decline, uh, driving demand while limiting the impact on profitability. And according to Wright's law, battery costs drop 28% for every cumulative doubling in unit production. 
So Tesla is growing their battery production substantially year by year over year. So yeah, they're lowering their costs. You know, initially your brain might say, oh my God, it's just gonna hit margins. But if the cost for um, building these cars and building the batteries goes down, technically the margins aren't gonna be hit as much and they get the help with the $7,500 EV credit. I don't think it's gonna be as big of a hit on margins as people are making it out to be. Um, also with the ramp up of the mega packs, the mega pack margins are, we'll see uh, coming up in Q, uh, when earnings come out in a couple weeks and also in Q1 as they start to ramp up more and more with the mega packs. I believe the mega packs are closer to a 50% gross margin. So as they ramp up those, it is slight decrease in gross margins on the EV side will just be made up on the mega pack side. So I think they could stay around their 25 to 30% gross margins and above 15% net income. So I don't think this is gonna be as big of an issue as um, the news is making it out to be. I think this is just a positive and I would be very, very scared if I was a legacy automo automotive company. And then let's look at this chart. So as we can see, Right now for range, there's no company that competes with Tesla on range. Uh, the only other, there's only a couple other car companies that have even above a 300 uh, mile range. And every single one of those is more expensive than a Tesla right now, which is just unbelievable. So are you really gonna buy a car with worse range and more expensive? Like, I don't see how you could possibly do that. It's, just dumb, honestly. So if you do uh, price per range in the far right of this column, uh, you see Tesla is by far the cheapest in dollar per range. It's not even close. And, yeah, and then once you get into software, uh, the charging network, software updates, to me, this is just a checkmate. Elon's playing chess. These guys are just trying to catch up. He moves, moves ahead, positive news. It's hilarious to see Jim Cramer talking about today that you know he's scared for the competition. Where is this competition? Like, there, it doesn't exist. <laughs> it's so funny. And if the competition does come, they're coming for the EV sector, not FSD. So once they can maybe catch up in EV sales, which I don't think they will because uh, Tesla's just growing exponentially, and we have the ramp up of Berlin and Austin this year and the announcement potentially it's not official Elon said you know it might not be a hundred percent true but I think they're gonna announce a couple more gigafactory uh, announcements this year and like you said it could be in Indonesia and in Mexico and I think those are two amazing places to get started for two new gigafactories because I've always been a little nervous with China they could always just pull the plug on them. They've already said no, because the, with the cameras, they don't want them driving near military bases for spying issues. So it just kind of scares me. And then there's a little bit with like not being able to maybe ramp up the gigafactories. And all, as their middle class grows, cost for employees is increasing. So why not go towards you know Indonesia or Mexico uh, the one in Mexico can sell cars in North America and in maybe Latin America. And then for Indonesia, you can sell to uh, Australia and New Zealand and maybe even to Singapore and Malaysia. So it just it, it expands the company. This is just gonna make Tesla's demand probably too much again. There's gonna be long waits again. And hopefully the ramp ups happen and I believe once you own a Tesla, it's gonna be similar to an iPhone. You're, someone that bought an iPhone in 2011, I doubt changed to a Blackberry or an Android after that. You're probably still with it. You know, you just realize it's just so much better than what other uh, phone is out there. I think that this is just a huge hit to legacy automotives. It's gonna be very hard to compete because if these other companies are gonna have to lower their prices as well to compete with Tesla, they're just gonna lose more and more money, which just hurts them even more. I think that this could put out a lot of other uh, legacy automakers. It's a great news for Tesla. If you're looking to buy a Tesla, this may be the best time to buy. Uh, they're not gonna change the rules uh, Inflation Reduction Act for the $7,500 credit, but it could change into uh, March 
So it could get, get even better for Tesla because right now the performance doesn't qualify. They have different rules where the seven seater applies for the $80,000 credit where the five seater only applies for the $55,000 credit, which doesn't make sense. There's definitely some corruption on that side. So I think maybe into March, it could change the rules a little bit where all the Model 3s can qualify up, or Model Ys can qualify all the way up to 80,000. So when that happens, demand's gonna even increase even more as they can sell it for the performance package. So all this news is great. It's very exciting uh, day for Tesla as the stock goes down which just shows that the markets are irrational, but the fundamentals for Tesla are just unbelievable. I think this could be a record year for Tesla. I still believe even in a recession that they're gonna be close to 50% uh, growth this year in sales. And as they ramp up their energy side, it's just an exciting future for Tesla. Um, don't just fall for a lot of people think, you know, because the stock is falling, that the company's not doing well. It's just idiotic. Um, you just gotta look at the fundamentals. They grew at 40% in a recession. I think with these price cuts, I think they'll easily grow up 50%, especially with the ramp up of Berlin and Texas. But yeah, that's all I gotta say. I'm just excited. Um, a lot of demand. I, I'm excited to see the demand um, and how many people order Teslas in these next few weeks. And if the uh, the wait times for the cars start to grow and back to you know how it was about a year ago so but thank you guys for watching my name is sean on the tesla hyper bowl and see you guys next time